most hidden sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. This story begins with two cities in the book of Genesis during the time of Abraham. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah started with the revelation that the sin in these cities had become so great that it reached the heavens. The Lord said that the outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah was indeed great, and their sin was exceedingly grave Genesis 18.20. This verse highlights the difference between knowing something and witnessing it firsthand. For example, God knows how much we honor and love Him, but He wants us to show it through our actions and service. Similarly, the conversation between God and Abraham about justice is not because God needs to be reminded to do what is right, it's more about Abraham understanding the nature of justice. The verse emphasizes that the outcry against the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah prompted God's response, highlighting the importance of actions and their visible impact. Imagine a time before the birth of the much-awaited son of Isaac. Abraham, known for his unwavering faith and exceptional hospitality, presents a contrast to the residents of Sodom and Gomorrah. His life shines as an example of hope and kindness, surrounded by cities full of selfishness and wickedness. Abraham's prayer for the cities. As we get to the main part of the story, we encounter a crucial moment. God made a special promise to Abraham a pact that would shape the destinies of many. At that time, God informed Abraham about his plan to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah due to their extreme behavior. However, Abraham, always acting as a mediator, pleaded with God on behalf of the good people living among the wrongdoers in those cities. His plea was not just a simple request, it was the heartfelt appeal of a prophet who deeply cared for the well-being of others, even strangers. Approaching the Lord, Abraham asked, Will you truly sweep away the innocent along with the guilty Genesis 18.23? Abraham's discussion with God mirrors an ancient belief where individuals were often viewed as part of a larger group, like a family or a community, rather than as separate beings. If one person made a mistake, the entire group could suffer consequences. This concept can also be found in other ancient writings like the plea for mercy in the Epic of Gilgamesh, where leaders pray for only the guilty to face punishment, not the blameless. Abraham's plea for Sodom follows a similar pattern he was requesting God to spare the city if there were enough good people, emphasizing the importance of personal accountability over group punishment. This demonstrates an early understanding of personal responsibility and community unity. The wealth and corruption of Sodom and Gomorrah Sodom and Gomorrah were very wealthy cities, but they became blinded by their riches and corrupt ways. The people that were so focused on their own pleasures that they didn't see the impending disaster. In contrast, Abraham, a righteous man, stood out. He tried to rescue any good souls living in those cities. This isn't just about the punishment that befell Sodom and Gomorrah, it's also about kindness, empathy, and the impact of standing up for others, showing us the significant difference one person can make by choosing to aid others, even when it seems tough. As the narrative progresses, we encounter the key figures residing in these cities. Their lives are shaped by the choices they make, with each decision influencing their fate. It's not just about the past events, it's like a reflection of our own lives and the world around us. This tale strongly hints at future events and serves as a reminder that our actions can have irreversible consequences, affecting many aspects of our lives and those around us. The Emergence of Sin The wrongdoing of Sodom and Gomorrah has sparked numerous discussions and interpretations. Traditional perspectives commonly highlight lust and moral decay as the key sins, as seen in how the city's residents treated the visiting angels. Various interpretations converge on the idea that the sins of these cities were multifaceted, encompassing not only sexual misconduct, but also a disregard for the well-being and dignity of others. Accounts in Genesis 19 and other biblical texts, like 2 Peter and Jude, reveal a consistent pattern of harmful and unlawful behaviors that adversely impacted innocent individuals. So what precisely were these transgressions? The primary sins of Sodom and Gomorrah were a blend of issues such as sexual immorality, inhospitality, arrogance, and brutality. Amidst these, one particular sin stands out, often overshadowed. By the conclusion, you will grasp its significance. In Genesis 19, the men of Sodom exhibited inhospitality alongside aggressive intentions towards Lot's visitors. However, the true nature of these events is more nuanced. The arrival of the divine messengers, as night descended upon the renowned cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, celestial beings visited, appearing as regular men with a hint of something divine. The inhabitants of Sodom, kin to Abraham, swiftly discerned the special nature of these guests. In those times, hosting visitors wasn't just a courtesy but a significant duty. Acknowledging this, Lot invited them to stay at his home. The response of the city dwellers to these visitors was swift and telling. 
A crowd gathered, driven by a blend of curiosity and sinister intentions. The environment in Sodom and Gomorrah was tumultuous and disrespectful, particularly towards the guests and Lot's hospitality. The zealous and persistent conduct of the crowd illustrated the city's severe moral decline. This moment unveiled the true character of Sodom and Gomorrah, a biblical account notably in Genesis 19, portrays the escalating tension between Lot's protective hospitality and the city's hostile intentions. This clash set the scene for the impending divine judgment. The men of Sodom, both young and old, demanded the guests be handed over to them for carnal purposes, but before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house, and they called to Lot. Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Genesis 19.4.5 There was extreme wickedness in Sodom, where the city's people, instead of showing hospitality, demanded sexual relations to assault the visitors. This act violated strong customs of protecting guests in ancient societies. Lot offered his daughters to protect his guests. Although this act was not consummated, it showed his commitment to protecting his guests. Divine intervention striking the aggressors with blindness prevented the attack and highlighted the seriousness of the situation. This passage reveals the depth of moral corruption in Sodom and the importance of hospitality in ancient cultures. Expanding our understanding, Ezekiel 16 provides further insight, shedding light on additional grave transgressions. Behold, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters surrounding cities had pride, more than enough food, and careless ease. Yet she did not aid the poor and needy, they were arrogant and committed abominations before me, therefore, I removed them when I saw it. These verses underscore the presence of pride, indifference and neglect towards the most vulnerable as part of their wrongdoings. In the scriptures, the Hebrew term often translated as abominations is employed to depict morally repugnant acts. The discourse on the primary sin of Sodom and Gomorrah varies. Some posit that it primarily revolved around inhospitality towards guests and violating significant cultural norms. Others view the narrative as a portrayal of a series of severe ethical issues, encompassing immoral sexual conduct, excessive arrogance, and neglecting the needs of the less fortunate, revealing the hospitality of darkness. Imagine a scene where two angels disguised as ordinary men enter the notorious cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Here, the first lesson reveals that a society's character is often reflected in its hospitality. It was already night when the two angels came to Sodom. Many were sitting at the city gate of Sodom, seeing them rise to meet them and prostrating themselves with their faces to the ground Genesis 19.1. This gesture from Lot in a place marked by its moral decline is a clear demonstration of respect. In contrast, it raises the question of how often we neglect the opportunity to extend kindness to strangers. Interestingly, the angels initially refused Lot's offer of hospitality. They said no, they would spend the night in the square Genesis 19.2. Lot insisted that the angels stay with him, this part of the story makes you wonder why the angels said no at the beginning. Was it to see if Lot truly wanted to offer hospitality, or did it show how hostile Sodom was known to be? As the story unfolds, it becomes clear that the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah extended beyond merely sexual misconduct to encompass a fundamental lack of human decency and kindness. Lot's decision to offer refuge to his guests underscores the profound moral decay within the city. In a place where hospitality was scarce and strangers were met with hostility, Lot's compassionate actions shone brightly as a commendable example. This tale prompts us to consider our treatment of unfamiliar faces in our midst are we akin to Lot, extending a hand of shelter and care, or do we embody the inhospitable ethos of Sodom and Gomorrah? Our attitudes towards the most vulnerable members of society often reveal the core values that underpin our communities. The intervention of the angels plays a crucial role, shielding Lot's family from the angry mob and forewarning them of the impending destruction of the city. In Genesis 19.12.13, the angels deliver a grave message to Lot, urging him to evacuate his loved ones from Sodom before it faces divine retribution. The outcry against the city has reached such heights that the Lord has sent us to obliterate it. Do you have any family here? Sons-in-law, sons. Daughters gather them and escape this place. This declaration sets the scene for a tense narrative of urgency and flight. Lot, the nephew of Abraham, resides in Sodom, and the angels urgently direct him to gather his kin and flee the city. The urgency is palpable in Genesis 19.15 as the angels implore Lot to hasten his departure as dawn approaches. Take your wife and daughters from here, 
to avoid the city's impending punishment as the story unfolds, the countdown to the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah commences. With the break of dawn, the hour of reckoning for these cities draws near, symbolizing a momentous event in history that foreshadows a grander judgment to come. The urgency of escape. When the angels issued the warning of impending destruction, a sense of urgency gripped the situation. Lot was instructed to swiftly gather his family and depart without delay as the city stood on the brink of divine judgment. However, convincing his family to leave proved to be a challenge. Lot's hesitancy to act promptly was evident, and his sons-in-law dismissed the danger as a jest. The escape was no leisurely stroll but a frantic race against time. The gravity of the situation crystallized as they were led outside, with one of the angels urgently proclaiming escape for your life. Do not look back or linger in the valley. Flee to the mountains, lest you be consumed. Genesis 1917. The family's flight was underscored by a profound urgency, an urgent transition from the familiar to the unfamiliar, from comfort to survival. As they fled, the cities they left behind succumbed to destruction. Then the Lord rained down sulfur and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord in the heavens. He overthrew those cities and all the valley, along with all the inhabitants of the cities and the vegetation on the ground. Genesis 1924-25. This cataclysmic event transcended mere natural disaster it epitomized divine retribution. A striking image of cities consumed by fire and sulfur serves as a stark reminder of the repercussions of moral decay and defiance. Lot's preservation, amidst the city's ruin, was a result of Abraham's intervention. While the cities met their fate due to their wickedness, Lot was spared as an act of mercy towards Abraham, as recounted in Genesis 19.29, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and rescued Lot from the midst of the catastrophe that overtook the cities where Lot dwelt. Following the tragic demise of Lot's wife, who disobeyed the command not to look back and was transformed into a pillar of salt, Lot's escape stands as a cautionary tale on the consequences of yearning for a sinful past. A transformation into salt amidst the salt formations of the area serves as a perpetual reminder of this calamity, a tale referenced by Jesus in Luke 17.32, as a warning against hesitating in the face of divine judgment. Meanwhile, Abraham witnesses the smoke rising from the city, a poignant moment underscoring the potency of his prayers, which ultimately secured the deliverance of Lot and his family. This narrative underscores the significance of obedience and the impact of intercessory prayer amid times of reckoning. Consequences and continuing impact. The aftermath of the devastation unveils a troubling account involving Lot's daughters in a cavern, Driven by the fear of their family line's extinction, they resort to intoxicating their father to conceive, leading to both daughters becoming pregnant. This grim episode, woven into the narrative, underscores the profound and enduring influence that residing in a morally decadent milieu can exert on individuals. The actions of Lot's daughters reflect the molding impact of the negative ethos in Sodom, illustrating how they were tainted by the wickedness surrounding them in the city. In the New Testament, Sodom and Gomorrah assume a figurative significance, symbolizing the ultimate judgment at the culmination of time. Described in 2 Peter 2 6 8, the obliteration of these cities serves as a cautionary tale and demonstration of God's judgment upon an unrighteous existence. And if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction, making them an example of what will happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued righteous Lot, who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawless for that righteous man, living among them day after day, was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. Likewise, in the book of Revelation, Sodom is emblematic of the final collapse of a corrupt societal structure, illustrating the execution of justice through divine means, culminating in the eradication of wickedness. For a considerable period, skepticism shrouded the existence of Sodom and Gomorrah. Nonetheless, archaeological findings have since pinpointed their probable location near the Dead Sea, these cities were part of a cluster known as the Plain Cities and were likely situated in the vicinity of the Dead Sea. While some hypotheses suggested their submersion in the sea, recent receding waters and archaeological endeavors have failed to substantiate this claim. It was not until 1973 that a significant archaeological site emerged, hinting at the potential whereabouts of these cities southeast of the Dead Sea. Excavations at locales like Babidij Djera and Numera revealed ties to the early Bronze Age aligning with the biblical chronology and reigniting debates concerning the historical accuracy of biblical accounts. Reflecting on the consequences, 
The tale of Sodom and Gomorrah's obliteration stands as a poignant testament to the repercussions of sin, vividly capturing the speed and severity of devastation that emblemizes divine retribution against extreme depravity. Contemplating the aftermath of this divine retribution is imperative, considering the wide-ranging implications of this event. The annihilation of Sodom and Gomorrah functions as a compelling portrayal of God's stance on sin and justice, prompting introspection into our own lives and the communities we inhabit. It beckons us to scrutinize whether we are neglecting God's desires and if there are facets of our existence that necessitate re-evaluation to align with His will and standards. Drawing parallels between the narrative of Sodom and Gomorrah and contemporary society can be thought-provoking. Jude 1.5 underscores the destruction of these cities as a stark reminder of divine judgment against profound moral deterioration. Some individuals argue that present-day society is experiencing a decline in ethical principles, evident in the proliferation of vulgar language, the erosion of familial values, shifts in traditional concepts of matrimony, and a departure from biblical teachings. There is a prevailing sentiment that personal accomplishments and hubris have eclipsed traits like humility and modesty. This societal transformation prompts inquiries into preparedness for divine judgment or a spiritual reawakening. The Bible, in 2 Peter 3, 10, 15, discusses the unforeseen arrival of the day of the Lord and stresses the importance of leading lives marked by holiness and godliness, yearning for a new era characterized by righteousness. This narrative serves as a call to reassess our principles and conduct in the contemporary world. What alterations can we make in our behaviors? Self-reflection on personal actions. The story of Sodom and Gomorrah serves as a personal call to each of us. It's easy to point the finger at society's sins, but what about our own actions? Are we contributing to moral decay in small ways? Are we caring for the needy or ignoring the needs of those around us? indulging in selfish desires or closing our eyes to injustice. This story is a warning to examine our lives and align our actions with moral and ethical values. So what can we learn from Sodom and Gomorrah? It's not just about fire and brimstone, it's about understanding that our actions, both as individuals and as a society, have consequences. It's a reminder to check ourselves, think about how we are living, and try to do better every day. Let's use this story not to scare us, but to guide us to be better people, making better choices and creating a world that is kinder and more just, showing kindness. In the hustle and bustle of modern life, the profound influence of hospitality and compassion can often be overshadowed. Similar to how Lot's benevolence shone in the midst of Sodom, our acts of kindness have the potential to illuminate a world that can sometimes seem apathetic. Whether extending a helping hand, lending a listening ear, or providing sanctuary, these gestures create reverberations that touch lives and knit communities closer together. At the core of any community lies hospitality, a fundamental value that binds individuals. The narrative of Sodom and Gomorrah imparts a crucial lesson the ethical vitality of a community is reflected in its treatment of guests and vulnerable members. Unlike the callousness of Sodom, hospitality signifies a spirit oriented towards the welfare of others, but he insisted so strongly that they did not go home with him, they turned aside to his house, and he prepared a feast for them, baking bread without yeast, and they ate Genesis 19.3 embracing God's warnings. The biblical account of Sodom and Gomorrah serves as a compelling tale illustrating the outcomes of disregarding divine admonitions. Yet how does this narrative impart lessons on the significance of being open to guidance and nurturing spirituality in our everyday lives? Embracing divine counsel can manifest diversely whether it involves heeding the gentle whispers of our conscience during decision-making, valuing the counsel of those with greater wisdom, or internalizing the insights gleaned from past encounters. It entails being cognizant of the repercussions of our actions on both ourselves and others, and endeavoring to lead a life characterized by integrity and fairness. Examining the personas within the narrative and their responses to God's warnings, we witness the angels forewarning Lot about the impending ruin of Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's reaction is swift, he comprehends the gravity of the situation and takes prompt action. This pivotal juncture underscores the significance of adhering to divine guidance. How does this tale resonate in our modern existence? In our frenzied contemporary milieu, it is all too easy to be engulfed by material pursuits and overlook our spiritual welfare. The tale of Sodom and Gomorrah serves as a gentle nudge for us to remain spiritually attuned and heed the guidance that comes our way be it through our conscience, sacred texts, or life's lessons. Spiritual acumen transcends mere religious rituals it entails attunement to the moral and ethical implications of our deeds. 
It involves recognizing the signs and admonitions in our lives and taking proactive measures to align ourselves with the path of righteousness and empathy, a resisting moral decay. Initiating the resistance against moral decline commences with self-awareness. It necessitates a continual introspection of our deeds and motivations, prompting us to evaluate whether our contributions to the community are positive. Tangible measures encompass engaging in volunteer work and maintaining a conscientious approach to consumption. It revolves around embracing a lifestyle that prioritizes empathy and benevolence over self-centeredness and apathy. Advocating for the upholding of moral principles extends beyond mere words. It entails setting a precedent through actions. It involves fostering an environment that esteems and celebrates integrity, transparency, and empathy. This can be achieved by assuming responsibility for our conduct, making principled decisions, and advocating for righteousness, even in challenging circumstances. Individual decisions wield a profound influence on society. The Bible cautions you as do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows, Galatians 6, 7. This underscores the notion that our actions, whether virtuous or malevolent, bear repercussions. By opting for a life guided by integrity, we contribute to the cultivation of a more equitable and compassionate society. Conversely, disregarding our moral compass fuels its erosion. Staying spiritually aware. A pivotal insight gleaned from the narrative of Sodom and Gomorrah underscores the significance of maintaining spiritual acuity. Abraham, a central figure, exemplifies this principle upon learning of the impending obliteration of the city. Instead of passively acquiescing, he engages in a dialogue with God, seeking understanding and petitioning for divine intervention. This underscores his vigilance and aspiration to align with God's will. In today's context, this translates to a continual quest for a meaningful connection with God in our daily routines. It entails transcending rote religious practices to grasp the underlying meanings and principles they embody. By doing so, we equip ourselves to make well-informed and ethically sound decisions that resonate with our beliefs. Advocating for a deeper spiritual bond is not solely about personal tranquility, it pertains to cultivating a society that upholds moral precepts and ethical benchmarks. The inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah lacked this spiritual connection, precipitating their eventual downfall now the men of Sodom were wicked and were sinning greatly against the Lord, shamelessly flaunting their sin before him Genesis 13.13. 13. This estrangement from spiritual guidance catalyzed societal degradation. What relevance does this hold for us today? By nurturing a profound connection with our faith and divinity, we can cultivate a moral compass to navigate the intricacies of contemporary existence. It involves seeking guidance from faith to address present-day challenges and personal ethical quandaries, benefits of a spiritually grounded life. It is essential to underscore the advantages of leading a spiritually anchored life in today's society. The narrative of Sodom and Gomorrah stands as a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the consequences that can transpire when a community collectively veers away from spirituality and core principles. Conversely, a life rooted in spirituality yields manifold rewards. It imparts a sense of direction, assists in navigating ethical dilemmas, and fosters a communal ethos founded on shared beliefs and mutual regard. For instance, the biblical injunction to love one's neighbor serves as a guiding principle that can shape our interactions, fostering benevolence, compassion, and comprehension in a world often fraught with division and discord. Love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians 5.14 This exemplifies the direct application of spiritual precepts in our daily lives. In summation, when viewed through the perspective of seeking divine counsel, the narrative of Sodom and Gomorrah imparts profound insights for contemporary society. By cultivating spiritual awareness, deepening our bond with faith, and reaping the benefits of a spiritually grounded existence, we not only enhance our personal journeys but also contribute to the cultivation of a more equitable, empathetic, and principled society. Let us embark on this voyage of faith with open hearts and receptive minds. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we assemble in your divine presence today, we present to you the chronicles of Sodom and Gomorrah, ancient cities once flourishing in prosperity, but ultimately crumbling beneath the weight of concealed transgressions. O Lord, enlighten our hearts and minds as we contemplate the wisdom gained from their downfall. Pardon us, God, for the instances when we have yielded to sin akin to the inhabitants of Sodom and Gomorrah. Acknowledge that at times in our pursuit of success in this life we may lose sight of the moral compass you have bestowed upon us. 
Grant us the vision to discern that material wealth and achievements do not define our true value. Teach us to differentiate between genuine success arising from your blessings and the illusory allure of excess, which may lead us astray. May we find contentment in your love and benevolence, recognizing that authentic riches stem from a heart aligned with your divine plan. Lord, we acknowledge the clandestine whispers of sin that may linger within us. Illuminate those concealed recesses where we harbor thoughts, deeds, and motives contrary to your sacred decree. Grant us the fortitude to confront and conquer these transgressions, empowering us to walk in the radiance of your truth. We implore for courage akin to Lot, who led a righteous life amidst a community engulfed in wickedness. In our daily endeavors, when confronted with temptations that could lure us astray, endow us with the resilience to remain steadfast in choosing the path of righteousness. Assist us, God, in evading enticements that seek to ensnare us and divert us from the course you have charted for us. Lord, when malevolent influences seek to drown out your voice within our souls, bestow upon us the discernment to heed your divine counsel. Shield us from pernicious forces that exploit our hidden desires and beckon us towards temptation. Strengthen our resolve to uphold what is right, even amidst adversity and trials. As we navigate the complexities of our contemporary world, guide us to embrace the divine guidance you extend, that we may heed your admonitions and discern the repercussions of our actions before it is too late. Just as you rescued Lot and his kin, liberate us from the snares of concealed transgressions and steer us towards the path of redemption. Lord, we beseech your aid for our families, communities and societies. In these challenging times, may we exemplify virtuous conduct, disseminating kindness and empathy. Grant us the insight to identify and address the afflictions plaguing our neighborhoods and empower us to effect positive change. Father, we humbly seek your counsel in applying the enduring lessons derived from the covert sins of Sodom and Gomorrah to our contemporary lives. As we ponder and reflect, renew our spirits, fortify us and bestow upon us the grace to live in accordance with your divine decree. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Question. Have you ever stopped to think about the bad habits or mistakes you might not notice that are influencing your life in a way similar to the secret sins that were present in the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah? 